So openness in education and the future of education. Open is a word that has a lot of different meanings, and education has several as well. So let, let's just start very quickly by getting some terms out of the way before we move on with the talk. For over a decade now, open in this educational context has been an adjective that's been used to describe different educational artifacts, things like textbooks, things like resources, things like courseware. Um, and so used in this way, uh, openness is really talking about teaching materials that are freely shared and that uh, come with permissions to engage in what I call the 4R activities. Those activities being reuse, redistribution, revision, and remixing. So while the nouns differ from each other in what we're talking about when we talk about open content or open educational resources or open textbooks, the operationalizing actions that go with each of those uses of the word open are the same. It's really about sharing and about being generous with other people and about giving. Whether you're sharing your course content or even moving over into the realm of open source software, sharing your source code, openness is really about being generous. It's about, it's about overcoming the inner two-year-old in you that screams, mine, mine, you know, it's mine. I want to keep it. Um, I don't want you to have it. Um, unfortunately, and I expect we'll hear more about this from Larry, um, law and policy are increasingly enabling us in our fit throwing, letting us scream mine ever more loudly, letting us throw ever larger fits and giving us bigger toys to hit each other with. <laughs> Even worse, there's this whispering in our ear that says, it's okay, everybody's selfish. People sue each other all the time. And you, you can do these things. That's, that's acceptable behavior. It's legal. Um, this is not a good situation. We as educators are not immune uh, either. You can see this kind of thinking in your colleagues down the hall, maybe in your administration. It's not completely pervasive, but these ideas that it's okay to be selfish, it's okay to sue people uh, are unfortunately common. So what is the role of openness having given that term a little definition in education. I think this question is actually really, really insidious because it implies there could be a large role for openness in education, there could be a small role, could be a primary role, you might not need it at all. Uh, when in fact, I want to argue that openness is really the only means of doing education. You can't talk about education without talking about openness. If there's no sharing, if I'm not sharing what I know, if I'm not giving you feedback, if I'm not engaging in this give and take with you, there is no education. Education's inherently an enterprise of openness and sharing and generosity. So we would say, or I would argue, that education properly considered is this relationship of sharing between two or more people. And so in the definition of openness and in the definition of education, we see this common theme of, of sharing. And we say that the successful educators, the teachers who are the best teachers, are the ones who share the most completely with the most students. Right? That's our definition of what a successful educator is. So how is it that uh, new media and technology are affecting education or openness or our ability to share? There are great opportunities here. And just let me talk about one of them very briefly. Expertise, in other words, the things that we know, the things we know how to do, the, the attitudes we have in terms of ethical behavior, things like that, are non-rivalrous, or in other words, they're not competitive. Um, I can give some of my expertise to you without giving it away. I can share that with you without losing it. And you probably know this rather famous quote by Jefferson, that he who receives ideas from me receives instruction himself without lessening mine, the same way I can light his candle without the fire of my candle being taken away from me. It's a good thing that teaching works this way, Otherwise, teachers would all be like honeybees who can sting one time and then die. You, you'd teach someone, and then you wouldn't know anything anymore. And that would be a problem for the advance of uh, society and civilization. So knowledge has a special property that you can give it without giving it away. You can share your expertise. You can share of yourself without losing part of yourself. It's very important. Expressions of our expertise, however, are different, like expertise that you put outside yourself and capture in a book. So if volume five is off the shelf and is missing, I have to wait for it to come back before I'm able to gain access to that expression 
of your expertise. Um, well, I should say expressions really aren't different now. Uh, we've been talking about new media and technology, and digital expressions of expertise are non-rivalrous themselves. So Larry's book, Free Culture, while if you want to read the printed version of it and it's missing from the shelf, you have to wait, everyone in this room could go to the website and read the online version of the book at the same time. When that knowledge or that expertise is expressed in a digital way, it no longer is a resource we have to compete for access to. This advance in our ability to give without giving away is almost, to me, it's indescribable. I mean, I'm a faculty member, so I'll ramble on for several minutes, but I can't really accurately describe how important it is. It's the first time in human history that we find that both expertise and the expressions of expertise are able to be given without being given away. So this gives us an, uh, a really unprecedented capacity to share uh, at a scale uh, that we've never been able to share before, and we can substitute the word educate in here as well. Uh, this technology just gives us an incredible opportunity. Now, I will say parenthetically, um, although it's been handled very well in the morning session, it'll be handled well the rest of the day, I'm sure, education involves more than just sharing expressions of expertise, of course. Um, turns out the internet's pretty good at enabling these social interactions and the other things that we consider being important parts of education, but I do want to focus on this idea of content. Um, technology, for better or worse, we're talking about these great new capabilities it gives us, but technology never is a one-man show, right? Technology always plays opposite its nemesis on stage, which is policy. So going back to tell a story for a minute, I, I love the expression web minus 10, was, was that what you said earlier today? Uh, in the 15th century, we saw what is arguably the greatest technological advance ever in the printing press. Uh, the difference between the printing press and the internet, of course, is that with the printing press, things went from being very expensive to produce and very slow to produce to being relatively fast and inexpensive to produce in the case of the press. But now we go from being relatively inexpensive and pretty fast to produce to being immediate and basically free. So the difference from before the press to after the press and the difference from before the internet to after the internet are really two large things. But we have the press in the 15th century, but we also have in the 15th century, the most draconian restrictions you could ever possibly imagine on the dissemination of information, something that makes a global DMCA look, uh, like my youngest girl would say, a parade of rainbow ponies, right? Okay. Rainbow sparkle ponies, okay? Okay, so Gutenberg's masterwork is a 42-line edition of the Bible, the Vulgate to be more specific, right? It's a Latin Bible. Um, and while the press is showing that we can mass produce Bibles at scale, they're not being produced in the vernacular and the language that normal people can understand. And there's a great demand for access to the Word of God in English or in Italian or in whatever language you want, but something that you can understand. And now that we know that the press can print these things affordably, um, why can't I get access to that in a language I can read? So as this technology develops and advances, instead of obliging that demand that actually exists, what happens is that the church instead ramps up production of what are called indulgences, which are slips of paper you can buy to receive forgiveness of your own sins, or you can buy some extras to get the sins of your loved ones in purgatory forgiven. Um, and they actually push for stricter laws against access to vernacular copies of the scriptures. Uh, this English law from the 15th century, notice it doesn't talk about possessing the scriptures, just reading the scriptures in the mother tongue. If you do that, you'll forfeit land, cattle, life, and goods from your heirs forever. I mean, the DMCA seems soft by comparison, right? <laughs> the first year that this law was in place, 39 people were not only hanged, they were then burned after they were hanged. Okay? So we have this collision happening in the 15th century between this incredibly powerful new information technology, huge demand from the people, and yet these outdated ways of thinking that find themselves reinforced in law uh, in conflict. Now this collision, of course, resulted in that series of events that we generally refer to as the Reformation, a time of fairly large social upheaval. Unfortunately, um, our day isn't a very different time. We can tell the same sort of story, even just in the education context. So take a course management system like a Blackboard or a Desire to Learn. 
This is a technology that is an online technology, the content in which is capable of being shared with everyone in this non-competitive way. But this technology is turned against itself with passwords, with different kinds of restrictions that pe pe keep people out, that withhold, that conceal, instead of sharing, being generous, being open, being giving. Uh, and not only do they conceal, but they also delete all the contributions that students make at the end of term, right? We, like to jokingly say that if Facebook worked like Blackboard, every 15 weeks it would delete all your friends, unsubscribe you from all your groups, <laughs> delete all your photographs. I mean, that's not a way to build a community of people, right? Okay? So technologies today, well, they have a lot of potential, but they're not being used maybe appropriately. In 2008, we had this case of a professor at a university in the southern part of the United States who filed a lawsuit in which he claimed copyright of his lectures, and because they were copyrighted, all the people taking notes in his class were creating derivative works of his copyrighted material, and that as the owner of the original, he had the right to control how those were used. Why are you in education? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's, it really makes me wonder, can those students ever become a professor? I mean, if I stood up to teach, wouldn't that be a public performance of some derivative of his copyrighted work? Right? Or what if I took a job and actually applied the skills I had learned in his class? If someone observed me, could they reverse engineer what you know, he had taught me? Um, it's an outdated way of thinking. And in terms of demand, again, I mean, I suppose many of you know many of these numbers. We have about 120 million people enrolled worldwide in higher ed institutions right now. And that's expected not to grow up to 150 million, but to grow by 150 million in the next 25 years. So in other words, we're going to more than double the amount of people who are trying to get access to higher education. Uh, my favorite way of summarizing this up is that in India alone, this means 2,400 new universities in the next 25 years. Or in other words, building, hiring, staffing, and opening a brand new university every two weeks for the next 25 years. You can't do that, right? So again, 500 years later, we have this collision between this powerful new media in terms of the, the internet, this ravenous demand for access to higher education, and these outdated ways of thinking about protecting my intellectual property, which is my copyrighted material, which is just a culture of withholding and not a culture of generosity or of sharing or of giving. Now, if that all sounds familiar, it's because I talked about it about three minutes ago. Okay. Education is right on the rickety edge of its own reformation. Uh, if you've seen Anya's book, which is forthcoming, this DIY university, um, she talks about the cost side of this. Um, but we're, we're really, we're at a troubling point, and it all hinges, it all comes back to this idea of openness. <coughs> openness is what is missing. So as we stop and look at ourselves and we spend some time uh, introspecting. We think about this great new technology that we've been blessed with 500 years later. Now, have we learned the lesson of 500 years ago? As we take this technology and this opportunity to share on this scale, will we use it to be more open? Or will we turn it back against itself and use it to do other things, to uh, keep the status quo, enforce that status quo with policy, maybe with state and federal law? Um, are we really gonna fight this fight again? Or are we going to sort of wake up and understand that we need to be more open? I want to submit to you, actually, that as you think about new media and you think about technology and you think about how those intersect with education, that really the only proper role for technology and education is to increase our capacity to be generous. Okay? Whether that's with giving feedback, whether that's with sharing materials, whether it's with a whole host of things that get away from those kinds of static artifacts and get more into discourse and discussion and argument and debate and conversation and collaboration. You don't just have to give of your resources, you can also give of your time. There's a lot of things that you can give. And to the extent that we do give, and to the extent that we're open, education will be improved. Thank you.